Hey, Buzz. How you doing, man? Good, Doc. Coming all right? What are you doing down this way? I was coming out to film a vlog, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> coming out to suss out class, just talk about the community, engage with people. How you been, brother? Right, yeah, going well, man. How's class of these days? Same shit, man. S same okay. shit. <laughs> Ty was saying it's a bit more quiet out here now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think that is? Alright, really? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck knows. <laughs> everyone's in jail. Yeah, everyone's in jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense, brother. Really? Hello. How you going? That's good. <laughs> she was the music she knew he was. Yeah, awesome, bro. <laughs> awesome. You have a good day, brother. Yeah, you too. Hey, hey. How you doing, my bro? All right, bro. What's your name, brother? Ty Kavner. Ty Kavner. Legend, bro. We're out here in Clarendon Vale. We've come out for a bit of lurk in Clazza. You've lived out here for a while, hey, bro? Yeah, 20 going, 21 years. 21 years? Yeah. Fuck yeah. How are you finding Clarendon Vale these days, man? Oh, these days, it's quiet, relaxing. It's pretty quiet? Yeah. Seems pretty quiet. Yeah. Back in the day, it was, yeah, sort of. A bit more hectic? Yeah, hectic. Does it still get hectic at night out here? Oh, with the burnouts, yeah. Yeah, the burnouts. Can't go wrong with the burnouts, right? For sure, man. My good friend was telling me, like, um, because he lives out further towards the coast yep. but he used to have to catch the bus and it took like an hour and a half and he used to go all the way through Clarendon Vale and he reckons when they come through here at night fucking get to this one point and pff, brick through the window and oh, the rocks yeah. it all calm and got little kids in there yeah man it was fucking pretty hectic like literally you couldn't even hop on a bus back in the day unless they would jump out the window or if not do something towards the bus to yeah the for sure and yeah. I guess that just comes out of boredom eh it's like yeah. there's nothing else to do so might as well fuck with the bus when it comes yeah, through yeah. yeah. So how old were you when you moved out of here? Bro, I'm born here. You're born here? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're 21 now. Yeah. Yeah, killer, bro. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, but I'm in our classes these days, just nice, quiet, relaxed, and joyful. Yeah, that's awesome. I like bro. these days now. It seems to be. Why do you think it's chilled out now? Ever since that lockdown here, everything's just really changed. Corona? Yeah, yeah right. Corona's. So how, how do you think Corona affected the neighbourhood out here? Just people stay in their houses more now, do you think? No, uh, you don't really even see no one back in the day. Like, back in the day, you see everyone. Like, skate park used to be full, the park used to be full. Even this little path bit here used to be full of people, but no, it's hardly to come across anyone now. Interesting. No. Do you think phones have got something to do with it? Like, everyone now talks on social media rather than hanging out yeah, with each other? Yeah, online or if not, over the console or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah like playing game. games. Yeah. yeah. Oh, do you want to go get that bus, brother? No, no, she's all good, bro. No, Wait. no, no, no like worries, bro. Bus. No, too easy, man. Yeah. And, um, so do the buses, at, like, do they always stop out here? Oh yeah, they always Because you were here before and the bus drove yeah. straight by you. Yeah, because I might have been running past them. You could have to go past would have been at the green power box there. Okay. Halfway. Yeah. They've got their rules, eh? Yeah. Yeah, sweet, man. Well, thanks for the chat, brother. Uh, Gonna go on a bit of a lurk around, go suss it out. Yeah, we're good, bro. Thanks again, sir. No, we're good, bro. On your brother. On your brother. <laughs> we got the fellas. The one and only crossbow. How you doing, brother? How you been, my man? Good, bro. How you doing, bro? Not too bad, bro. Let's go for a lurk, eh, fellas? We'll go for a walk around. So how's Klazza going these days, brother? Oh, boring. It's boring? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's boring? It's the same old. Yeah, yeah. do they do anything at the community centre here? Uh, the skate park, that's about they, it. Yeah. They give away um, bread and stuff like that yeah. to the community. Yeah. Free bread? Yeah. Bread, sometimes. And stuff like stuff. That. Yeah. What about events? Any community sort of events? Not that I really. No. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I met you, Bo was out at a it was a writing workshop out here at the community yeah. centre, eh? Yeah, down. Is that down, down on that side. Um, yeah, for sure. So that's Rokeby High, eh? What's Rokeby High? Let's Yeah, because so I did some workshops there. Did some graffiti workshops a while ago. Was Mr. Vanessa there when you were there? No. Nah. No, nah, he was a legend, man. He bought us a carton of beer at the end of the workshop. He was like, this is all right. No, nah, there was this one teacher. His name's Wicker. Yeah? He, you know Wicker. Yeah, he's awesome. He was like one of the older like grade managers. Yeah. Brought in alcohol once. I made a joke to him. Yeah. Uh, surely give us a couple. He goes, oh, I would, but I'm going to drink these after. And this is for a science experiment. <laughs> sure, Wicker. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, you need to drink, um, 
Yeah, you need a drink for your science experiment at school. That sounds like a classic rugby high yeah. trick. He was also going to set up a boxing thing at school. Yeah? But the school wouldn't let him. Yeah, right. Do you think, I think a boxing, because there used to be a lot of boxing out here. Yeah, um, Johnny Brown used to do a boxing thing. Yeah, the Browns have always been pretty yeah. deep in the boxing world. Yeah. That's not running anymore? No, I don't think so. No, no for sure. Not. I don't think it has for a year or two now, yeah. Yeah. Everyone went to Glenorchy or something like that. For boxing? Yeah, or Brighton. Or Brighton, for sure, man. Do you think um, having boxing out here would, like, yeah, be more of a healthy alternative? Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Most of the people now just go to Glenorchy to do boxing. Like, yeah. Most people do it, they move to Glenorchy. Oh, like, when I, I used to do it when I was real, real little. Yeah. Like, and then I've, I wanted to start it again. Like, I was trying to get this calm break. She's like, no, you're too violent. It'll make you more violent and all this. I think it can be a healthy alternative. To, like, because that's the thing, especially us blokes, we have, you know, we get angry, we got pent up aggression. And I think boxing um, can be a good outlet for it. And, you know, if you exhausted from training and punching the bag all day, you're not going to be out punching people in the head. You know what I mean? Like, um, but they convinced her to do it now. Yeah. But like, he shut down the Johnny Brown boxing. Yeah, for sure. And he did it. My family has been like friends with Johnny Brown. But I know. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, it, their family is quite well known. They've done so much for the um, boxing community over the years. I was catching up with Pip Brown the other day, you know, like. Yeah, but um, most of them walked over, like, not walked fucking. Like moved over to Glenorchy to do boxing. Yeah. Or well, like uh, I was gonna start it again, but now I've just gone into town PCY. So I've done less of the kickboxing. I might start doing that more. Yeah, awesome, brother. Find something else. Awesome, man. Have you been rapping much, bro? Yeah, but I finished school now. You finished school? I finished grade ten. So Sick. I've got to wait. I'll leave you done. I can't even like find places to record yet. Yeah. I reckon I'm just gonna write music and shit when I'm back at home now. Yeah. Staying in Claremont for eight months because I had a fight with my mum and shit. Yeah, for sure, brother. So I just left. I'm and glad. I'm back. And you, you kind of worked it out now? Yeah. Awesome, bro. Well, man, I'm excited to see you, um, yeah, when you get to grade 11, man, because, you know, for me, when I was at grade 11, yeah, you got access to recording studios. You meet a whole new world of people. You know what I mean? Like, my first proper hip hop crew we made when we got to grade 11. Mm. You know, I met guys from different schools that rapped as well. Different guys that made beats. So I'm excited, bro. Would you be up for spitting some bars for the vlog? Maybe a bit later. Maybe a bit later. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Fuck yeah, bro. You reckon he will do it too? I'm down. I'm down. You yeah. down? Sick. Yeah, let's do it, fellas. We'll do it in a minute. Um, we'll get a beat up or something. Classic houses out here, man. I actually do like the classic old Besser brick, you know, old school houses. The faded colours. Many houses getting burnt down out here these days? Ah, uh, no. No? Uh, a while ago, there was two up there. We'll walk up to it in a bit. Yeah. There was two right across from like my house there. And shit. They got burnt out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, bro. Is there much drugs out here these days? Oh, name them. <laughs> name them, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting, man. It's interesting, um, I feel like across the board, drugs have gotten a lot worse, you know, mm. over the last like 20 years. Yeah. And the access to them is, you know, a lot easier. Same time, it seems a lot quieter, you know what I mean? Yeah. But with drugs and stuff, I've never really touched them, except for like weed. Yeah, but well done, bro. A couple bro. of me mates that I know and I'm really close with were, um, have recently quit ice and shit. Oh, that's good, man. One of us coming off it. Yeah, it's a very hard drug, ice, bro. Yeah. And it seems to be, like, from what I hear, like, it's easier to get than weed half the time, you know? Like, when yeah, I was no. young, I couldn't fucking... Yeah. Didn't have access to any of that shit. It was just weed. Yeah. He's quit everything, because, like, he was smoking dope for ages very bad, and with tobacco, like, yeah, as well. Yeah, for sure. And then he started doing other drugs, got laced a couple times, had ice... And then he ended up getting psychosis. Yeah. And now he can't even have a bong anymore without. Yeah. Mental. Yeah, similar thing happened to, you know, one of my best friends, bro. We grew up smoking weed together. And then, um, yeah, he got on a bit of 
bit of the bad shit. Mm. And unfortunately, it just affected his mental health so much, you know. Yeah, no, but he's doing good now. His That's Twitter, good, he's man. Gained, I think Real like 23, 25 kilos. Sick. He was 60 something, 64, and now he's like 68 or something. Awesome, bro. There's nothing better no, than he was 64 watching. 64, and now he's like 88. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, you're right, bro. Yeah, this is one of the houses here that got burnt out. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's nothing left of it now, is there? Nah. Two years ago. Two years ago? What happened to the rest of the house? It gets salvaged. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing better than watching one of your friends uh, turn their life around, man. Yeah. You know, it's a painful thing watching someone deal with addiction in any way, you know? Yeah, both of my mates who have on it have both quit it. Sick. Man, I'm so happy to hear that, bro. Well, mate, who was one that I was talking about, he's 18. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ice is such a, it just deteriorates people so quick. You know? You can see someone one month, four months later, they're a skeleton, you know what I mean? There's a lot of uh, burnt tires around. There's a fair bit of burnouts happening out of here, right? Burnout capital of Tasmania. Is it the burnout capital? <laughs> Probably. What do you <laughs> think it is? Happens. What do you think it is with we'll, burnouts? We walk down here and yeah. just look at the road, brother. Yeah, bro. We'll go for a look. Look at this fucking pathway. This pathway's had a few things burnt on it by the looks of it. What do you think it is with burnouts? I don't know. It just keeps people entertained. Yeah, it is, eh? Hey. And a lot of it's for people who passed away. Yeah. Like, it's cultural. That's interesting, eh? It's definitely cultural. Well, like, it's a... come here, and now since there's so many people that stand all on the road. Yeah. The police won't even try to stop it. They'll just sit there and watch. Yeah. It's interesting. It's like an actual part of ceremony in our own way. You know what I mean? Like, and it's it's so common now with funerals. You know, fucking light up the wheels, get them spinning. Yeah, you weren't wrong about this street, bro. Fuck, it's a skinny little neighbourhood street to be doing. <laughs> Burnouts up, eh? Yeah, they do pretty. They, they, they do, do pretty, pretty well. well. To be fair, haven't haven't fished into a one house my, yet. One of my step brothers, he does it because some of the burnouts and shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jai's name is. He's locked up now. Yeah. He he don't got long in there. I don't think though. Oh, no, big no, love, no, Jai. No. I hope you're out soon, brother. Then we've got another Jai, Stephen. Yeah. He my stepdad, Stephen. Yeah. It's his son. Yeah, for sure. Stephen Ford. They both got the same name. Yeah. But um, he's locked up. He. Oh, from what I know, I think it's like two to three years or something. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Don't know if he's gone through court yet, but... Fucking, you weren't wrong about these burnouts, mate. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, my house is just at the top, so I don't know the fuck. So you see it all? It's the best view. All the kids sit at the primary school against the fence. Watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. When school's on, sometimes they do it. So it sounds like burnouts are the, the biggest cultural activity now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like... When we talk about culture, it's what we do as a community together. Looks like burnouts are really the way these days. Man, this street has been eaten up. Look at this shit. Man, it's bits of rubber everywhere. Yeah, man. Yeah. This is actually, to be fair, this is like, well, it's fairly good. It's fairly good, yeah. Um, it's usually worse than this. True. <laughs> There's a classic Clarendon Vale houses. You got the, what colour is that? Oh, what, what yellow. Is it yellow? yellow. Is it ye Who the fuck built a Besser brick yellow house in the 1970s? I think that's what acid does. Acid, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Do you feel with the location of Clarendon Vale out here that you're cut off from a lot of places? Ah, uh, yeah, like, I don't really go in, like, most of the people I know don't really leave, like, Pazzo, Rokeby, Rosny. Yeah, just like, stay in this little rain, pocket. Like, Rokeby's... 701A, and then, like, Lauderdale area as well. And yeah. Hobart as well, but other than that, they don't go anywhere else. For sure. I can look at this. This is this is a piece of burnout history. Look at it. It's hectic. I'm impressed. There's not even a road anymore. It's just a big burnout. Yeah. Yeah. Skid pad. Skid pad. That's it. That one of mate's old houses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got the bottom half and the top half. 
So I guess when you move out here, you just have to get accustomed to the yeah. to the burnout. So if you want to be a part of the community out here, my nan she used to live up here a bit. Yeah. She hated it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I found it fucking hilarious. Yeah. Well, when there's nothing else going on, you know what I mean. Look at this. They've eaten this straight up. There's just like bits of tire everywhere. Crazy. Barbara Ave. Which way are we going? Are we cruising up here? Oh, no, where to next, you reckon, bro? Yeah, it was good strolling. I think um, Clarendon Vale does have a lot of history behind it though. Yeah, well they built this place in the 70s. Yeah. So they, yeah, they, they started building the Housing Commission in the 1970s. I think it was 1977 that they actually labelled uh, Clarendon Vale as a suburb and yeah. they sold off a lot of the public houses. Yeah, my family actually owned the property. Yeah, right. Down, down there. Yeah. It was, um, Apple Orchards before all of this got built. Okay. What's your family's last name, bro? Um, Percy. Yeah, Percy. They're the ones that, they're my side that owns it. Yeah. And so it was all apple orchards out here before the house owes. Yeah. Interesting, bro. And so your family's still here now? They've been uh, here for... Some, some of them, yeah. Some of them, yeah. Nan's old house, they're wrestling with yeah. yeah. How's your nan going, bro? Oh, Sweet. So it's at the community park, eh? That's oh, how it is. <laughs> this park. So here we've got the Clarendon Vale Community Park. Paddock. It's a paddock. <laughs> yeah. It's a paddock. Is there a playground in the community park? Nah. Not even a playground. Nah. <laughs> now here we go. Pretty basic. Yeah. At least there's a few trees, I guess, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, climb a tree. you got to take what you can get, really. It's just a bunch of pathways and some grass. Oh, it's going to and some, bag back. Yeah, and some rubbish. So I've noticed, um, especially when I was out in Glenorchy the other day, that uh, there's a whole new wave of, like, gangs. And, like, I've heard, since I've been out here, I've already heard of a few. You know, when I was out in Glenorchy, I met, I think, I think they were calling themselves the Glen Ops. What? Yeah, the Glen Ops, and then uh, they said then there's the Glen Boys. Yeah. You know, is it the same out here on the Eastern Shore? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. I, I, I got a photo with a bunch of lads in town, and... Yeah. And, yeah, what crew was that? ASB. ASB, Eastern Shore Boys. Yeah. See, when I was a teenager, I'm pretty sure there were fellas, like, there was Eastern Shore Boys, or... I remember it was the Risdon Vale boys, you know what I mean? But it's the same thing. Do you think it's just... Do you think it's a lack of opportunity for some of these guys that they just think, oh, well, I'll join the gang? Why do you think that they... Um, it depends on, like, the each different, like, because some... Because, like, I'm friends with a lot of them. Yeah, straight not, up. Not ASB. I'm, I yeah. don't really talk to many of ASB. Yeah. But, like, other ones. Other crews, like, yeah. some, it's just do, like, some of them are just groups, like, they all have each other's back. They don't go out of the way to cause trouble. They yeah. They have each other's back. Yeah, they're just friendship there's groups. some that, that, that do like to go smash up bus stops and do all that shit. Just trying to make a name for himself. Like, like, I understand, like, having a group, some, one of your mates get gang bashed, then you or your mates come and help you help your mates. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. When it comes down to, like, all this knives and shit, like, I ain't a fan of knives. I don't like weapons. Yeah. But if someone was to come at me with a weapon, yeah, I would use one as well. Yeah, well, protecting yourself is um, it's very important. And, yeah, I've never carried a weapon in my life, bro, you know? Like, and I grew up in a time where it was like, yeah, you don't, weapons, you don't, you do it. You know what I mean? You punch on. Yeah. If you want to fight, you go toe to toe, you know? But, um, yeah, do you feel that, like, the new music coming out, and like the drill that's coming out and just the kind of like gang gang shit across the world because it's like America but now it's in Australia because yeah. drill started in Chicago mm. and then the UK took it yeah. on and then Australia took it on you know what I mean so do you um, think that it kind of increases the trend of it yes and no yeah because like there is drill songs that I ain't about the violence That's yeah 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 there's some really good drill yeah and same with hip-hop man there's some really good conscious hip-hop but then there's also gangster hip hop and I guess like gangster rap and 
Yeah, it's a hard one because people will still say that drill fits under the umbrella of hip hop. So um, my whole goal in the end is yeah. to make a good song, but yeah. I also don't want to lie on my music. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I tell the truth. Yeah. Sometimes I make it gory. Sometimes I make it like don't make it gory. Yeah, yeah. So like, my whole goal is just to make a good song. Yeah, exactly, bro. That's the same. I usually just let my emotions out on the track. Yeah. How I'm feeling. If but... I'm pissed off, I'm pissed off. The song will be angry. Yeah, yeah. If I'm upset, the song will be like a little different. Yeah. If I'm yeah, if I'm like having a party, then I'll be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you want to make something fun. It's, yeah, it's good, bro. I think that's really healthy that you fellas are actually processing your emotions in the songs. Because once again, you're better off putting your angry emotions into writing a song than going to punch someone in the head, you know what I mean? It's, it's definitely important. And I feel that, like, for some people, for example, you know, that have gone through hard situations, been around a lot of violence, a lot of, like, you know, that sort of shit. Listening to the music can make them feel a bit of relief and like they're not alone, you know what I mean? But at the same time, you do have the other side of kids that are just looking for someone to look up to and to become. Um, and yeah, there's more the kids that aren't doing it to kind of get rid of their angry emotions. They're kind of doing it to try and be something. Now there was this group that I was involved in. Yep. It was pretty big. I told them, look, I'm done. Yeah. And like, if it wasn't for like my cousin and my dad, I don't reckon I would have been able to get out of it. Yeah, for sure. Like even to this day, they still message me. Yeah. And they ask me like, "Can you do this? Can you do that?" I don't open it. Yeah, for sure, bro. Brad, can't say like it's dog or whatever. I'm just like, when you get into that level of it, yeah, it's different. Now you got to put yourself first, man. And the thing is, like a lot of these groups, they're just out to get you to go do shit with them and then get you to take the blame for it. That's that's dogging. And get you locked up. Yeah, yeah, and that's and dogging dog, someone. But then you making you think you've got to take the blame for it, otherwise you're the dog. Exactly, shit bro. Like that happens a lot. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate in the... Yeah, in the, in the crime world. Yeah. Fucking plovers. In the crime world, man, you know, there is, like, a lot of expected loyalty in that sense. Uh, but once again, if you're... If you want to claim that you're someone's brother and they're your brother boy or yeah. you're in a gang and you don't want the best for them... Then that's fucked. Then that's fucked. Yeah, it is. That's fucked, you know what I mean? And I've noticed that across the board and I know so many people that have like, you know, spent 10 years best mates with someone thinking that they had their back but they only did so long as they could control it, you know what I mean? And, and um, yeah, it was about what they could do for them, not them wanting the best for their friend. Uh, good on you, bro. I'm real proud of you, man. You know, it is um, it is hard out here. And it's a hard one with, like, especially when you're a teenager, man, because everyone wants to fit in. You know what I mean? Like, you're going through just insecurities of growing up, all that sort of shit. And, um, you know, this way. Yeah. So is this a community centre here? Yeah, this is part of the community centre. Yeah. I'm not sure which one's the child and family centre. One, which one's the child and family centre. That's child and family centre. Yeah. This yeah. one's a men's shed where I think they do woodwork. And they, they did have a gym oh, in there. I'm not sure if they do no more. Sick. So this is the men's shed. This is basically where everything is in Kaza. Yeah. If you go anywhere else, you're not going to find anything. Yeah. You this have is, to be in this area. This is the central. Yeah. The only problem is the shop's overpriced. Yeah. <laughs> the good old shop. It's the kind of same. I mean, they do have some good flake. Oh, they got some good flake? Yeah. That's like, good, man. So this is the men's shed. I'm going to have a little look in here. <coughs> well, I think it's really positive they've got something like this out here. There we go. Clarendon Vale Neighbourhood Centre. Here. And so they, they used to have a gym in here, eh? I think they still do. I'm not sure. Interesting. They sure got it all um, caged up, don't they? Still on the windows. Oh, here's the playground. So they do a bit of woodwork here, teaching skills. That's pretty cool, man. Do you know many young fellas that come up here or everyone's like, nah? Nah. nah. They've never really given it a chance. Yeah. It always takes, it takes someone to start, you know what I mean? Like, 
And it was the same with Tazzy Hip Hop, bro. Everyone was like, nah, I fucking don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, what, you're gonna fuck a rapper, yeah? Or do you think you're fucking, do you think you're a rapper? Like, when I was starting out, when I was your age, no one took me seriously. It wasn't until I went to Melbourne in 2010, and then everyone was like, oh, oh you've been to Melbourne, have you? What did you rap over there? Oh, mate, you fuck it. And then when I beat uh, 360 in the battle and he was in the radio, everyone's like, oh, you're a fucking millionaire, aren't you? You know, like, I was like, nah, far from it. I just won a rap battle. But it just shows that people's perspective was so kind of confused. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. They don't, they don't really think like they... At our school, they kind of treat us like we're a bit special. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They, they take the piss out of us, get us to rap for them. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sick, bro. That's what you got to do, man. Because I'm the same. Yeah, if anyone wants to mock my rap, I guarantee you, I'll burn you in a rap battle pretty quick. You know what I mean? Go down this way. Here we've got the uh, Clarendon Vale store. In 2010, before I ever did my first battle in Melbourne, what I was just talking to you about, I came down here and painted the uh, fence with a few of my mates and we did a big graph mural. Oh, we could have a look at the stuff on graffiti. <laughs> yeah. Do you know these guys at all? There's only like two, two throwies really. Was that Nolk and Mook? Not them. I don't know them. No. I don't know, Worthy. Where's Worthy? It's that green shit one. It's that green shit one, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I do bubble, right? Like, I'm more of a pen Yeah, guy. for sure, bro. Not a, I learned that with spray paint. Yeah. Yeah. Said, all right, I'll have to post that one online. Is that all pens that you've done that one no, with? Spray paint. Spray paint. It's nice, it's actual good. Yeah. Yeah. 7019 on the back thing. Yeah. Is that the postcode out of here? Yeah. So is there, is there many fellas repping the postcode out here? Yeah. yeah. yeah what, do you, what do you like the postcodes? What do you think it is? Is it just a number to rep? Well, no, you know what I mean? Honestly, love representing love rep is that in your home. Like, home yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. There's been a lot of stuff that's happened here over the years. Yeah. With like everyone, everyone's been involved in it sort of in a way. Yeah, for sure. Especially when something tragic happens, you know what I mean? Like a death in the community or yeah. some extreme Recently, stuff like that. Was, and... um, speaking of the family center, there was a lady that worked there. She also worked at a school, Ange. Yeah. She, she passed lovely. away. She was oh, bless. That, oh, Ange. Yeah, yeah, she was lovely. Yeah. It was Barb and Ange? I think so, yeah. And they used to work at the Rugby Community Centre. Yeah, so. Oh, did she pass away? She was beautiful. God she bless. Beautiful. Ange. She was the one that gave me my first job teaching yeah, graffiti I've, out here, bro. Yeah, I've known oh, her since. Yeah. yeah, I've known her since I was like a baby. Wow, man. And she's yeah, they used to always work at the Rugby Community Centre. Yeah. That's her. Bless. Oh man. Yeah, Barb and Ange. There's two ladies. Because when I was, one of my mates got done painting and then he had community service and then Barb and Ange were like, oh no, this is good. We want to get you guys to do proper stuff. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. how it all started. That's how I ended up at the shop there. There we go. God bless Ange. Yeah, we need people like Ange. In the she, community, she you know what I mean? Everyone, she helped everyone. Strong women like that. They're so special in the community, you know? It's a matriarch. And no matter what, they always keep a good attitude and keep pushing. I think your girlfriend's kind of mad at me. Oh, why? When you went to Hobart, yeah. she tried to come down to see you. All right. Because she wanted to meet you. Oh, bless her. <laughs> and then, and now you're in Canada. She's just over Rokeby. I'm going to pick her up soon. Yeah? Well, man, I was thinking of walking down towards Rokeby. Yeah. How are you going to pick her up? We're walking? Step that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you can come for a drive on a lift rope. <laughs> yeah, why not? I've got to head off pretty soon. But I've got about an hour and a bit. Yeah, I'll ring your stepdad soon and see if you'll be able to take, take me a rope to get her and I'll yeah. message her. And then you can come for a drive and drop your son. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. Appreciate that, brother. Where my dad used to live, and that's great. Yeah. I had a Down dog. in the units there. I had a dog named Pagey for our last name, so yeah. last name's Page. Yeah, yeah. He ran out, because so there was cops on the street, the dog hated cops. Yeah. And um, the dog 
ran at the gate because there's like a door at the gate. There's like a door for the gate, yeah. and it was jumping. As I was jumping, the latch came unlocked, then it jumped one more time and it opened. Yeah. He's ran out. He's attacked one of the cops, and he wouldn't let go. Then one of the cops shot him. He still wouldn't let go. Yeah, right. And then he was still bite, biting the cops, and then yeah. the cops shot him again and killed him. Yeah, right. Fuck, man. I think that's why. I don't know exactly what happened because I wasn't there. I was real little. I was yeah, yeah. Out. Seven, eight, oh. probably ten, or something that's, that's anywhere around there. Fucking day. no fun, man. Cop killing your dog when you're fucking seven years old, bro. Yeah, yeah right. that's a rough thing to go through. Yeah, man. we went through. My dad, my dad and my sisters went through court for ages because, like, yeah, I really liked the dog, and the dog was considered to be a dangerous dog. Yeah, yeah. But it was love. It never ever hurt me. It used to just sit on my lap, lick me all the time. Yeah. And my older sister, there was, it was fine with them, and then it was fine with. Everyone it was protecting. It was yeah. protective. Yeah, it just didn't like police, and I think that's what happened. But yeah, oh well, it was years ago now. Is there much um, p police brutality going on with young fellas your age? Like, like, because uh, I've been chatting to a few young fellas, and they've told me of a few cops that have been like rough and teenagers. Up. Is this an yeah, abandoned same. house? Yeah, this is abandoned house. Yeah, yeah. I've been in there before. You've been in there. Let's go have a look. Let's, Let's go have a look. I think this is a bad <coughs> We hope so. We hope so. Hello. <laughs> yeah, that was a huge story. There was this dude, I was mates with him. We had a mix inside this house. Yeah. This window was broken and we had to climb through it. Yeah. And as we climbed through the window, we were there mixing the after window. mixing. This lady told us to get out, so we got out. Oh, yeah. And as he, he went out first, and he told me, and we both got out, and he told me to go back in and grab my chick, because he was too scared to go back in. Yeah. So I went in and grabbed it for him. And we jumped out, I cut my leg open, not knowing, because I was stoned out my mind, I barely Sounds like there's a dog in there. Is there a dog barking in there? <laughs> don't know. Yeah, I jumped out, cut my leg open, uh. and I was stoned as fuck. Got all the way down, near the of our shop area. Yeah. Realised my whole leg was wet, lifted it up, it was whole wet. Yeah. The dude, the mate that I was with, Ren, this dude <laughs> who we went and found after, he stayed with me yeah. until someone came and got me and then got taken back home, got an ambulance. But the dude that I was with left me, who I actually smoking with and shit here. Yeah. Originally met up, we've left me on the side of the road, bleeding me out. Fucking hell, did you have to get stitches or anything? Yeah, I had to get stitches in my leg. My whole leg was covered in blood. I'm not sure how I was bleeding so much. Yeah, right. How many stitches? The cut was only about that big and probably about that deep. Yeah, oh, you hit the right like, spot, man. It's like a bleed and fucking tons. Especially in your leg, there's lots of arteries and shit in there, you know? Yeah. This is like, it seems to me that um, when you're coming into Clarendon Vale, just up here, they've got a whole new section. And then all of a sudden you hit the creek and you're like, boof, now we're in Clazza. You know what I mean? It's weird though, because you have like Clarendon Vale in the middle, then you've got like Leaf Hill and all there, which is really actually kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. Then you've got Rokeby, which I'm not sure, uh, kind of similar to Clazza. Yeah, yeah. But I'd say it's a little bit nicer now. Yeah. Would you say that's on the other side of the main road where it's like, yeah, it's that's like, where Rokeby Primary is? Yeah, around there. Yeah. It's a little bit nicer than down here. For sure. But, um, like, it's the Clazza's lost around it. You've got Glebe Hill. You've got, like, even there's, like, another area, like, down there, fucking Oak Downs. And then you've got Clazza in the middle and Clazza's just fucking dump. Yeah, yeah. Compared to it all, it makes us look shit. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I kind of like the dump in the middle. I think Rokeby's a little bit better, but that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. But, um, yeah, when you got Glebe Hill, Oak Down, they look way better. They, I don't know, they kind of act like they don't, they're still not a part of the community here. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I feel, because there's so many new houses popping up over there, and there's so many mainlanders, and there's so many, like, different people all moving down to Tassie. But it's like places like this that are the real Tassie, you know what I mean? This yeah. is the real Tassie. This is, this is how it is. Yeah, this is how... Plaza's classic yeah. like that. This tunnel's got some pretty sick tags. Yeah, we'll go suss it out. My mate drew a turn in and beat him down here. Yeah. Spray paint. Good underpass, it's always good. <coughs> Mook's got a few pieces out here. This Mook fella. His uh, canes. 
That's nice. Under all the capping. KBL. Kids breaking laws, eh? That's nice too. NFR, that's huge. Fuck yeah. Come on. Now why would I beat these niggas? They play these games like hide and seek. We wolves with silent sheep. When I pierce the skin and it slides in deep. When I walk across that cheek, side on a block, get put to sleep. Me and my flock make angels weep. Talk to the ops, get burnt like weed. Mm. If you talk to the ops, you're off that sack. I don't got time for online chat. They bark and bark, but don't bite back. Mm. Put on my light, that got back. Mm. Got that mic, we know that's crap. You talk to fight, you talk and snap. Watch mm. my side, but run like track. Turn in red and then call me flash. Remember that time when he got slapped? Was running away and he got your back. Remember that time when he got slapped? Got hit in the face and dropped his hat. Freedom, none, that's us. Keep the map. I'm out all night with a fuck. You whack, give for life and won't come back. Ask my off the fight on crack. Hey, crossbow worthy. Hey, hey. hey. I'm a bean on a drill beat for fucking days. Hop on the beat and I'll make it cray. Hop mm. on the beat and your bitches slay. Mm. And your bitches get away. Get mm. out my fucking face. I don't care. Let me say, kick him back with my brother cross hut. But I got that bow, aim so slow, speaking in slow mo. Got that tongue, you already know, yeah. yeah. But I got them bars, got that flow when yeah. I get it on her. Huh? Like it's King Kong, huh? Yeah. I'm the man, yeah, scrubbed up with no bone, yeah. yeah. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Running yeah. from corporate subway surfers in Kaza boy, yeah we lurk and come right here, we run like a circus, eh? Yeah. We don't play with nicks, we run in the circus, come right here, get pop like detergent, come right here, fast in a fuck, play for a feast, we parking them up, little bit of shit, we stacking it up, come with a body, we stacking it up, and a boy got a stick, we packing it up. Hey, yeah fellas. We got crossbow and worthy, worthy, worthy's too worthy. Claimed of our represent. Lurk with reels. Worthy. Aye. Yeah. Let's go, my brother. Aye. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Aye. Let me just say, I don't care if you're fake. I got me real mate. That's Bo Page. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's worthy. You heard me. I don't care. Don't give a fuck. Stress G. Mm. I don't care. You all fucking know me. It's me, worthy. Got the power, Kenobi. Yeah. I show that shit. You all just know me. Got the fucking flow G. But I take it out. Yeah. Mm. And I take it out. All these cunts on their shit and they fuck. Uh, yeah, they're right. fucking their mouth, but mm. they fuck their shit uh, mm. I don't give a fuck if you is a shit cunt hey. Get away, just get away You're not safe, the street's not safe Let me say, mm. I don't care You need a getaway Let me just say that it's Klaza hey. mm. Not behind the gate, but you're locked up behind the page I don't give a fuck, I fucked up hey. But mm. I keep going with the flow Turn it, you know mm. Turn it like the stomach and the shotgun blows Yeah, hey. we with grills Yeah, we know that we kill every little when we Right, and now we in it for frills. This pussy talk, but we gon' make them drop like they be poppin' pills. Mm. Little pussy, but we in it and we aimin' for the hills. Uh, little pussy say they wanna rap. Come right here, we gunnin' lad. Little pussy come right here and they be fucking gettin' slashed. Mm. Little pussy, I be, little pussy, we be runnin' rap. Come right, get a fucking hundred racks. Little pussy's gettin' smacked. Talkin' tough on Insta, little pussy, get your pussy. <laughs> hey, talkin' tough on Insta, little pussy, get your shit whack. Little pussy gettin' smacked, the pussy runnin' through his pad. Mm. Hey. Hey, yeah, that was dope, bro. Hey, yeah, I was a bit afraid too. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah, my freestyle so dope, you know it's dirty. I'm chilling here with my brother Crossbow and Worthy, but either way, still kicking back, sipping slurpees. Know that we do this every day because it's worthy. Uh, we're back in class, bros. Even way until I get the billy. Maybe I'ma pack it up. Yeah, get the bills and then I stack it up. Yeah, I keep on rapping while I'm on the lurk like a haggard cunt. Uh, yeah, I'm spitting the fresh. When I sit, when I even be ripping the set. Hey, take it back, but I ain't skipping the steps. So either way, I'ma switch it to a different step. It's like, yeah. Hey. Hey. <laughs> We punch the flesh, I don't care if you're bone numb to the core Get the fuck off of my phone, get the fuck out my face Get the fuck on that page, I don't give a fuck Get the fuck on that page, yeah It's a rave and I party on your grave And I dance, call that shit insane mm. Aye. Yeah. yeah, fuck yeah fellas 
Dragon Ball, Kamahama, eating my live life. I'll be Jeffrey Dahmer. Come right here and leave and rip his fucking plaster. The boy won't talk, but will we take his and we kill his father? The boy won't talk, but will we aim at his fucking head? Mm. The little pussy leave him six feet deep and leave him dead. Mm. The little pussy sending shots, but we aim ahead. The little pussy popping off, we leave him in a fucking trench. Hey, fuck yeah, fellas. Yeah, it's nice to be back out in Clarendon Vale. Yeah, I love Rob Braslin. Rob Braslin, I know he did some, um, he did some comedy tours at Clarendon Vale back in the day. He, like, came out here and he was just like, yeah, come out and I'll show you around Clarendon Vale. You know what I mean? And he's such a funny fella. I've got so much time for Rob Braslin. Um, yeah, we're just talking about my mate Lanky. Rest in peace to Lanky. He's from out here. He's a very well-known well fella in the community, you know. In certain ways, he was a gentle giant with a big heart. But he was not to be fucked with. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. He couldn't fuck with Big Wanky. I know, this this park's a bit nicer with a bit of sun on it, isn't it? When it gets shining. Yeah, when it gets shining. It does feel like an actual park. Are these all your cousins? <laughs> yeah, can't escape the cuzzies. What's going on, guys? What is doing? Nothing. Nothing. What's going on in Clazer today? Nothing. 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 Yeah, sweet. You guys are chilling on the skate park. No, they wanted to find you. They woke up. Ah, you came looking for me. It wasn't you? You called me at ten o'clock. That's all right. My name's Grills. How you going? Doing all right? Hey. Hey, sis. We're just out here with Bo and now we're talking about the community in Clarendon Vale. How do you guys find the community out here these days? Shit? Why is it shit? Because there's nothing to do. It's because there's nothing to do, eh? Do you guys ever think about, like, creating opportunities for yourselves? No. No. Do you think it'd be a lot better out here if, like, the community got together to, like, put things on? Because it's easy to, you expect like the council to do it, but the council doesn't do anything anymore. It's a good idea. I reckon we should put we're on an event one day. We're not. Hey, hey. So yeah, just went for a lurk around Clarendon Vale with Young Crossbow and Worthy. They were good fellas. I love meeting, uh, love meeting young fellas that have a good attitude, you know, and to see that they were still pushing themselves and being confident and putting themselves out there. It's so important that we express ourselves, you know? And that's the thing, like, you know, I do talk about, um, I've been talking about toxic uh, content in hip hop, you know? But it is so important for, especially these young fellas to be able to express themselves. And I think it's really about, once again, establishing Establishing the difference between fantasy and reality because I know so many people out there can watch a, watch a hectic movie or play a hectic game or listen to a hectic song and they're not going to go do some stupid shit. But unfortunately, there is a lot of people that are already in a toxic environment and then the fact that they have music that helps enable it. Uh, once again, and when drugs get involved, you're talking about, you know, People's brains are differently wired, and especially after they get on some bad drugs, it affects your brain that much that sometimes people don't know the difference between reality and fantasy. And that's where you'll get people that, um, yeah, actually do their fantasies and fucking hurt people, you know? So it's so, it's so important for us within the community to explain the difference. I'm here at the... Uh, well, it's now the Clarence Youth Services Center, but it used to be the Rugby Community Center. And I came out here, fuck, yeah, it would have been over uh, probably 16 years ago. And I met two ladies called Barb and Ange. And they were the only people out of any council that believed in us when it came to doing street art, to doing graffiti. And so they got me to come out here and paint a mural that was half finished. I'm pretty sure High Five and Topsky were the original ones that painted this, the start of the mural and I finished it. Hey, it's just on the side of this, this shed here. It looks like they've got a bit of a men's shed going. This looks like an old church, I'm guessing. The old rugby church or something like that. 
It's been turned into this uh, community centre. How you going, mate? How you going? Well, brother. Just filming a bit of a vlog at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Would you be up for having a yarn? Yeah, awesome. What's your name, brother? Oh, Andy. Andy. Yeah, yeah it's been a yeah, while, yeah. bro. It's been Way a while. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 When did we, we met, like... Oh, I was working out in Mornington. Yeah, and you were um, a youth worker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. So I'm still youth work, doing youth work, but now I'm doing it for the council. Awesome. So we get uh, kids in here from um, just over the road in that school there. Yeah, uh, Bayview. Bayview and also Clarence. They come here and they do woodwork. Yeah, that's and mad, bro. Welding up the back there as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Great, it's man. Really it's, sweet. it's so good to see that you're still working in this yeah. industry and also facilitating, facilitating space for the oh, youth yeah, for something man. like this, man, with yeah. skills, you know. Uh, I just went through a big walk with a young crossbow, the yeah. young fella that raps, yeah. and his mate Worthy, and we went, you know, just walk around Clarendon Vale and we we're just talking yeah. about things that are available for them, you know. Yeah. And it seems that this place is probably the only place that's really available for them. Totally. Well, there was a, I was running a bike program here, fixing up bikes. Yeah. Um, and they've moved um, guys from Risenvale, you know, the Risenvale bike program. Yeah, yeah. They've moved out here. So just over uh, in Bayview, they've got a shed out there, sort of outfitted with all, Sweet. you know, all the bike stuff. So there's that too. Yeah, building um, bikes. Bit of gardening over there as well, but yeah. you know, there's not much. Yeah, there's for not, sure. Not a lot, man. Um, and it's kind of hard because a lot of the kids, you know, they see kind of, I guess they put these sort of skills in the same place or getting a job and you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's, yeah. yeah, it's a hard one. I've been, yeah, my plan is to hopefully by the end of the year, come back out here and try and put on a concert or Yeah, there. for sure, man. Cause that's it. Yeah. These young fellas, they love rap yeah. and they, it's something that really does help them yeah. power them. Yeah and just to practice their skills. But oh, um, maybe um, Youth Week or something like that. You yeah. Because they, they usually have big big stuff then. I could drop your, drop your line. Yeah, when that's coming that'd up. be great, but, man. Um, I'll give you my contact details yeah, before I head yeah, off. And um, get Dundee and stuff down. Yeah, oh, yeah, we'd love to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we did one in Bridgewater that yeah, was yeah. best. It's the yeah, best successful like, youth yeah. event that I've done in so long. Yeah. I only found out today that Ange passed away. God bless the Barb and Ange. The, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I met them here 16 that's, years ago. That's a long time back. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But I was yeah. glad to hear that she never stopped, like, looking out for the yeah. community and, oh, you know. You know, it's, it's got to be done. It's a really close-knit community down here, but yeah. it's kind of, I mean, you can see it's growing. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's being gentrified a lot as well. Huge, yeah. Yeah, the young fellas were saying it's kind of hard because... All the new guys moving in, yeah. they're pretending that they aren't there, you know yeah. what I mean? And they're avoiding them. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. I think the more that we can, yeah, build the community, the oh, more we can, sure. like, break down those barriers. Yeah, totally. And I think it's important, especially for everyone that wants to move down here from the mainland, to at least to embrace the people that are here, oh, you absolutely. know? Um, absolutely. I, that have been here for a long time. I hate to see it sort of split to, you know, like, up the hill. Down the hill, Down yeah. The hill. But it creates classism you know, and... Yeah, and that, that's kind of, you know, we've, we've got, like, the, the kids from Clarence are a bit, you know, a bit broader demographic, but the the kids, like, here, you know, it's um really close-knit, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And I've worked with, you know, I've maybe worked with mum and dad and... Yeah, yeah, know, exactly, man. Like, well, especially when you've getting, been around, like, yourself. On, yeah, same yeah. here. I know most yeah. of the kids' parents yeah. from when I was growing up. That's right. You know, yeah. I met a couple of young fellas in East Sands the yeah, other day yeah. and <laughs> then their mum hit me up, like, remember when we used yeah, to drink yeah, coffee yeah, in yeah, the mall, yeah, you know? Like, so I'm like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> here we are a whole generation yeah. later. Yeah, that's right. As a youth worker um, that you've been doing it now, for how long? Oh, 50. 15 yeah. odd years, yeah. 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 Do you think things have changed that much in 15 years? Um, look, I'd have to say um, there's less there's less of what we do than there was yeah. 15 years ago. There was a lot of um, youth like diversionary programs. So, yeah. um, you know, if a kid was maybe going off the rails a bit, um, there was a lot of programs there that could help them find their way or, you know, yeah. just give them that contact point back into the community. Mm. A lot of that's been lost, you yeah. know, and it's really unfortunate because, um, 
but you know, there's more kids around these days and, yeah. and less for them. For you sure. Know. It yeah. seems that the whole system is relying more on an individual support worker system yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you've got to qualify for that. Though, yeah. You know, like, and that means you've got to get to a doctor yeah. or a psychologist yeah. or, you know, and psychologists cost at least 300 bucks. Yeah, day. for sure. So if you can't, you know, and how many psychologists are around here? Exactly, yeah, 100%. <laughs> you know, so you've got to go into town. Maybe you don't have a license. Maybe mum doesn't have a license. Yeah. How are you going to do that? Yeah, you, you cut off from access from it's, all that. You know, and mate, if you're if you're um, on benefits, you can't shell out three hundred bucks. No. A time. You just can't do it. So you're not even you haven't got even yeah. that much to spend on groceries. That's right. Yeah. I mean, shit, how much are they these days? I'm struggling to buy. Groceries. Exactly. It's just like yeah. And man, it's so so. There's more. Like, don't get me wrong, NDIS is a great thing, mm. um, but it to access that you've got to you've got to be, uh, you know, you've, you've got to be able to play the game. Yeah, exactly. And, Which is the system once again, you know. And yeah, the, if these hurdles. people already need yeah. support, just basically yeah, yeah, living, yeah, yeah, achieving yeah. something like that is near impossible. Huge, yeah, 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 yeah. Especially if they, you know, if they're. Um, 18, you know, they might have gone through, you know, um, child protection system or something. Mm. They stop at 18. Yeah. And where do you go from there? Man? Exactly, you yeah. You might not have the skills to be able to play that game, you know? Well, especially if people have grown up in um, child protective services and things like that, unfortunately, they have a lot that can be delayed in oh, their development, no, you? you know, yeah. which is unfortunately most of the case. So, Big by the time parents. they're 18, they yeah. still might have the mind of yeah. a 12 year old, you know. Yeah. Yep. And for me, even it, with all my capabilities in life, yeah. due to the trauma I had growing up, yeah. there's aspects of me that haven't developed yeah. and haven't matured, yeah. you know. So, it's, yeah. it's very easy for people to not yeah. understand and point the finger and be like, oh, why don't they want to help themselves? Why well, don't they want to? The guy behind the desk. Yeah. is always going to be ticking boxes, man. And yeah. if you don't tick those boxes, if you don't tick the right boxes, sorry, you don't get you don't get your your help. Yeah, that's that's um that's always the way it is. Yeah, I don't know how you fix that. I just do what I do. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it, man. We're all trying to. Yeah, we're all trying. We've all got to survive, yeah. and we're all got to try yeah. and contribute in some way. Yeah. And the more that I see these boxes. Mm -hmm. The more I think it, it does the opposite. Yeah. It's separate. The more that we put someone in a box and yeah. we label them, and you know, I feel like the boxes are a part of colonising culture too. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah, it's I like agree. we don't understand this, so we'll label that and we'll put it over there in yeah. that cabinet. We'll pigeonhole that. You know what I mean? And yeah. and and once again, the um, the language that to develop, the language is developing to understand ourselves, yeah. um, is still only just coming up oh, now. Right. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, only now am I understanding, oh, like, I'm on the spectrum, and that's why I was friends with the nerds in high school, because yeah, they right. were on the yeah. spectrum. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. before we just had oh, yeah. bogans yeah. and nerds and yeah. fucking, you know, punks. That, hit. that weirdo over there. Yeah, 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 that weirdo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he was fucking weird. Yeah. Turns out yeah. he was on the spectrum. That's right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now that we can understand, we can actually help people suit, you know, yeah. help uh, facilitate people by suiting their needs. Man, and there's different, you know, from, from my point of view, being grown up, sort of. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's different ways of teaching, you know. Um, I think you can, you can get sort of bogged down in, all right, well, sit down in the classroom, listen, write down the stuff that I say to you. Yeah. And, you know, but man, not everyone responds to that. Most just people don't. don't now. They just don't. Most it's people like, don't. You gotta you gotta be able to go, oh this kid's you know, this kid, you know, draws really well. Yeah. And that's how he imagines the world. Or this kid, you know, is hands on. Mm. That's how he feels with oh, all yourself, you yeah. know, you're a words man. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, and there's all different ways of doing it. You can't just go this, this is the one way to do it, and we're going to do that. If you don't fit the mould, sorry, son. Fuck off. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not good enough. We definitely you know? need to take the curriculum back. Like, I've learnt more in the last year 
just through traveling and yeah. talking to people and being open and yeah, learning yeah, yeah. than I have ever learned from the system. Yeah. And, and now that I've kind of come back home, I still see so many people stuck in certain stages of life because once again, they, you know, death is one of the biggest ones. There is no answer to death in this culture. <laughs> And, you know, like, yeah. even just ch having a ya chat with some of the people in the communities, death is the biggest issue. Yeah, that yeah. then leads, people don't know how to grieve, they then go yeah. to addiction, and then that ends up in crime, and then boof. And really, every time it leads back to uh, significant loss or trauma in their life, you know? Yeah, yeah, man. And uh, look, we've got to get better at trauma. We that's, do. That's a big thing. Yeah, um, we do. And it's what I've, what I've come across in, in, you know, 15 years of doing youth work and throughout my life is, you know, trauma's the, man, it's the basis of so many. It's the basis uh, of life. Yeah. Because that's it, like, yeah. I was chatting with some guys yesterday and because some, um, some people I met on my travels as well, uh, especially culturally, yeah. they were kind of in control of their trauma. Yeah. And, you know, things like men's business, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because trauma can teach if you're in control yeah, of, of it. Yeah. But I feel like in our community, in our culture, we've lost control right. of the trauma. It happens right. to us. We don't yeah. do it ourselves for our own growth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's very interesting, man. And I feel as well, as you know, man, you grew up like my generation, yeah. our parents, generation was so traumatized, yeah. but swept oh, it under the carpet. Yeah. You couldn't try and heal or communicate that with our parents' generation, because they're like, hey, we're trying to hide our trauma. Don't you remind us that yeah. we're reflecting it onto you, you know, like. That's right. Yeah. I mean, my my background is from, um, from Britain. Like my dad came out here, came to Adelaide, you know, on a boat. Yeah. But he was born in, in an air raid shelter. Yeah, right. In the middle of a, you know, in the middle of a bombing raid. Hectic. Um, and... That's gonna do some deep-seated nervous system trauma. <laughs> yeah. I was learning that, um, yeah. you know, kids are actually meant to sleep with their mothers oh, for seven years right. because of how it affects us yeah. neurologically, you know. Yeah. I got yeah. put on a plane from Connecticut to Tasmania when I was two months old. Wow. I, like, who knows what that did to my yeah. nervous system, Absolutely. you know, yeah. and... Yeah just, yeah, just being able to kind of go, yeah, okay, well, maybe maybe I'll carry a bit of that generational stuff too, you know? Oh, but, definitely, man. It's um, in our DNA. It's It ends up, yeah, it ends up being something that you've got to deal with or it will deal with you, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Acknowl yeah. I, f I find it's really acknowledging it, yeah. accepting it, yeah. forgiving it, and then yeah. going on the journey of working with yeah, it. Because that's, right. that's the thing, once you accept it, it's not like it just disappears. Yeah, yeah. You have to learn to work yeah. with it and yeah. manage it and get better and, you, you know. push that shit away because it'll come back to That's it, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. And that's the thing with, I think, so much trauma in a lot of communities, when it pops up, drink, yeah, drugs, yeah. you know. I've known so many yeah. people that have used ice because they've lost their mother or father yeah. And the one thing that'll stop them crying is getting on the drugs, yeah, you know? Yeah. But what we need to do is cry. Actually, yeah, actually go through that grieving process. Exactly. Yeah. Feel those emotions. Yeah, yeah. Allow, yeah. allow, acknowledge them, accept them, yeah. and then slowly let them go. Yeah. Learn to live with the, uh, live with the loss, but I don't know. It's an interesting yeah. one, my bro. Thank you so much, man. Absolutely. Man, what a full circle. Yeah. Every time oh. I'm doing these vlogs, <laughs> a full circle yeah. comes. Yeah. And, bro, I've never forgotten you, man. Yeah. And your story, bro. Yeah. It's always stuck in my head. Yep. So, um, yeah, thanks again, bro. And good oh, on you for the good work, man. Yeah, and look, we're going to stick around. We're going to be here. And, yeah. You know, it's, yeah, we've just got to do what we can for the people around us. 100%. Because, you know, if we try and fix the whole world, we're gonna we're gonna fall on our knees. So. Oh, the world's got to sort yeah. its shit out. Yeah, everyone yeah. needs to worry about their own backyard. That's right. And if everyone worries about their own backyard, yep. and then we can worry about the rest yep. of the world as a community as well. And that starts with yourself. Exactly. One hundred percent. All right, man. Our we'll legend. Oh, check out this old mural. Check it out. Here we go. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. There's the old, the old road, the old blacksmith to the left. Oh, this goes to Hobart, they reckon. Fucking look at that. Oh, check out me grey tree stump. That doesn't really fucking work, does it?
Hogan the horse and old mate changing the shoe ain't too bad, except someone's drawn a fucking dick on him. Look at that. I bet you it was Toby. Toby, why'd you draw a dick on me fucking blacksmith, mate? Oh, this is old. Top Skin High Five did this, apparently. Or maybe, I, yeah, I think I painted the, yeah, I painted the fire. Oh, that's old, look at that character. Yeah, I painted the fire. There's a bloody horse. Well, that's pretty special catching up with Andy. What an absolute legend. Yeah, I remember meeting him, yeah, 15 years ago, and I was doing some youth work at, uh, for a program. And it really seems that that's what's missing now, you know? Um, the system's relying on individual support workers, which, you know, most of the time just comes down to help with basic living. You know, most support workers don't have any other skills to give the kids. Um, they'll support them, but not, not necessarily give them direction on what they can do to help improve their life. You know, and it's a hard one because when we build this system, people don't want people to get out of it because they need a job too. If you're a support worker, it's a hard one. You know, I know there is a lot of good support workers out there and there's a lot of people with the right intentions, but there's a lot of people that don't have the skills themselves to help kind of get themselves moving forward. You know what I mean? Really grateful today to catch up with young Crossbow and young Worthy. They were good fellas, you know, and we had a few good chats off the camera as well. And um, yeah, once again, so many people out here are really struggling with generational trauma. And then you, the kids are growing up in it. They don't know how to express themselves or deal with their emotions. And a lot of the time their parents don't either. You know, we need, we need more understanding of trauma. We need more understanding of death because life is tragic. There is so many, um, so many painful moments in life and especially, especially in communities where, you know, there's, there's a lot of struggle and there's, you know, health issues and there isn't facilities. Going to a doctor is a hard thing, you know, like, as Andy was saying, like, the only psychologist is in town. There's no psychologists out in the burbs, you know? And this is, I guess, why I've become the way I am. It's because I've gone and seen psychologists and they've given me good advice. They've given me a little bit of direction, but yeah, it took my journey. It took my experience and it took my, you know, initiative sharing with everyone and learning. And, you know, I heard from a few people uh, recently that, you know, they thought I was a dickhead when I was in jail because I was going around and trying to talk to people about changing their lives and turning their life around. And they went, yeah, look, it's really the dickhead. He's walking around in his prison tracksuit trying to tell people to change their life. And I'm never trying to tell anyone to change their life. You can do whatever you fucking want. That's up to you at the end of the day. You know what I mean? It is entirely up to you. I'm not telling you to do anything. But there's a lot of people out there that want to change their life and don't have the tools to do it. You know, or they don't have any friends that believe in them and actually support them. You have to make people feel worthy. You know, you have to make people feel like they can do it. You have to believe in them. And this is why I really struggle with put down culture. You know, like put down culture. I'm going to make a whole vlog just about that because Australia has some deep-seated put-down culture. Oh, Percy Park. That's got to be Worthy's, Worthy's family. Hey, old Worthy said uh, he came from the Percy's that used to run the apple orchards out here before they turned it into suburbs. Oh, Percy Park. But yeah, fam, I'm going to come back out to Clarendon Vale. I really want to catch up with a few old mates. I want to catch up with a lot of my, my friend Lanky's mates. I want to catch up with Jimbo. 
you know, I want to have a deeper yarn about more the history out here in Clarendon Vale. It's good to come out here and talk with some of the youth, but I want to talk with a few of the older heads, come with some of the older boys, you know, um, and how they, how they found growing up out here, how they think it is now, and, you know, that's uh, why I'm pushing community, because, yeah, it's very hard. It's very hard, and even the youth workers are struggling. You know what I mean? And youth workers, like myself, are very empathetic people, and we just want to, you know, I know Andy has had a crazy journey. He's had a crazy life, Andy. And I remember when I first met him, and he was just really getting into the youth work sort of stuff. And to watch him turn his life around the way he has, and to see him 15 years later still out here contributing and making that impact. Good on you, Andy. You're a fucking real one, mate. And, um, yeah, we have to do this, you know. We have to do this. We have to come together as a community. And I guess, like, yeah, I guess, you know, I need more people like me as well. I can't just do this by myself. We need to operate as a community and... You know, I was having a chat with Grace Chia last night and she was telling me that um, she's just got some funding to do some workshops at the Moona Arts Centre and, you know, we're, we're tr really trying out here and hip-hop, we're our own community, you know, and the more that we can try and push that right direction, make some of these kids believe in themselves, regardless of what people are telling them, regardless of how much they're getting bagged out, you know? You know, for all you kids that are watching that talk shit about Crossbow and Worthy behind their back, you watch, those fellas are going to do well. I believe in them. And, I, and I'm confident that, especially after doing this vlog, you know, I had a good chat with them. But they're going to keep believing in themselves and they're going to put themselves in places where they can prosper. <coughs> hey, hey. And build themselves more and more, you know. But yeah, local grills, that's it, fam. Hope you have a wonderful day. And we on one. We on one, baby. Yeah. Big love.